right. Thank you all very much for joining us this morning. We're going to hopefully have a fantastic presentation for you. You'll be the judges. You'll go ahead and, of course, uh, give us any of your questions that you might have. But we'd like to help you have a healthier and wealthier 2020. So with that being said, we want to, first of all, let you know that we will take questions and answers. Please go ahead and pop them into the chat or the Q&A. And then we'll try to, of course, answer those while we go along. And hopefully, as time permits, we'll have some Q&A at the end. So I would like to turn the reins over to one of our panelists, Dr. T.J. Goodelin, DC. His background is extensive, as you can see here, a BSc in kinesiology, minor in biochemistry, University of Winnipeg, former athletic therapist, doctor of chiropractic, life chiropractic college west certified strength and conditioning coach certified personal trainer certified fitness and lifestyle coach retired military officer thank you very much for your your patronage of of course taking care of the royal canadian air force doctor <laughs> thank you five-time provincial rugby champion so he's also a sports enthusiast and of course he takes care of the people on the field as well as being uh, one of the probably people that put them in the hospital right doctor <laughs> a gold medalist yeah. national rugby champion um, certified chiro chiropractic extremity practitioner and over 200 classroom hours of applied nutrition so probably he's going to be a good guideline to basically explain to us not only how to take care of ourselves in a few different ways but nutrition is one of them and of course, current corrective care chiropractor in South Bay and the owner of Chiropractic First. So thank you, doctor. Welcome. I will transfer the reins over to you. Please uh, introduce or well, just say hi to everybody. And uh, Hi, everybody. And Keith, I got to tell you, that was probably the best intro that I've had. And I appreciate that, sir. And so well, let's you, get you into wrote it. it. So that was easy. <laughs> I just had to read it. So fantastic. Thanks for... Thanks for doing this. Thanks today. for reading it so well, Keith. Oh, thank you, Doc. Uh, so what we want to discover today, because there is such a mass spectrum of stuff we can talk about when we want to be healthier and wealthier. So let's go over wealth versus rich. All right. And what true health really is, as well as tools that we may have or may not have to get us where we want our health to go. Before we get into it, I want to introduce my co-host, our co-speaker, Kimberly. Uh, Come on, you can do it. I believe in you. Buttigieg. <laughs> Buttigieg. <good>. Buttigieg. <laughs> Come on, doctor. And Keith, you, you do such a good job of introductions. I should have just passed the torch back to you temporarily. Oh, thank you, doc. Kimberly's well, been a water specialist for over a decade, had a life-changing personal story with her family, herself, and her pets, currently working with top cancer researchers, physicians, other health practitioners to spread the message of what true health is. She's also helped thousands of individuals regain their health and help maintain an active lifestyle. Welcome, Kimberly. Thank you. It's great to be here. Kimberly, you want to go ahead and leave the uh, uh, first slide here? Absolutely. So um, talking about wealth versus rich. So it's true that wealth is an abundance or valuable possessions or money. Rich is having a great deal of money or assets, but I ask you, what is your most valuable possession? And it's true that if you don't have your health, no amount of wealth will be valuable to you. Steve Look Jobs. at Steve Jobs, right, exactly. Bingo. So. And so is health, what is health to everybody? Is it looking good and feeling good? Or is it more than that? Because when we base our health on simply looking good and feeling good, we're missing the big picture and we're making ourselves susceptible to disease and illness, including the top three, which we're going to go over shortly. And so the big picture of how we should be defining health is this. It's a complete state of physical, mental, 
and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. You can be the fittest, mentally healthiest person, and you can be in a domestic abuse relationship, and you're not really healthy, because really, that's not going to be any good for your mental health. Or you could have the best outlook. You could be eating the right stuff, and you can be active more than everyone, but you're living in a toxic environment. Well, you're not going to be healthy. So it's those three pillars, the physical, mental, and social well-being that we have to be aware of on a daily basis if we really want to be healthy. Now let's go into those killers that are making us sick. Number three, cancer. What is cancer? And I guess when I pose this, I'm not sure if everyone's muted. I want to go back here, though. Forgive me. 500 deaths a year. And this is an old stat. The number is even higher now. But what cancer is, is it's abnormal cell growth, whether it's one big cell or multiple cells, it's abnormal cell growth. And what happens every day of our life is we have T cells going through our body, through our immune system, which is regulated by our nervous system. And it's going through and it's killing all of these cells. So every day of our life, we have abnormal cells that are growing. And our body knows to take care of them. I always like to think of them as sniper cells. They find the bad guys and they take them out. Well, here's the thing. If our immune system, which is responsible for producing these cells, if our immune system isn't working as good as it can be, is it possible that our sniper cells, they fall asleep and they miss the bad guys? And then the bad guys continually grow, 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 grow. Boom, we have cancer. Now the number two killer in the US, heart disease. Just like cancer, you can be looking good and feeling good. You can be walking around with cancer. Heart disease, they always say typically the first sign of heart disease was a heart attack. You know, now the days we know with blood pressure uh, as well as other variables that it, we're identifying it quicker, but this is probably the most preventable disease there is. And a lot of you might've thought that this is the number one killer, but actually, the number one killer in, in this country now is modern medicine. Mm -hmm. You go in for an unneeded surgery, you end up dying. The number one reason people go to the emergency room now, adverse drug reactions. The number one reason for financial issues, other than buying a home in the Bay Area now, sorry guys, uh, is um, paying medical bills. How did this come to be? Only 5% of the world's population is in the US, yet we consume 85% of all the world's drugs. We should be the healthiest country in the world, right, Kimberly, if this is, if this is our remedy? Absolutely, absolutely. Now, Kimberly, you wanna take this over? Absolutely. And you know, it's interesting, Thomas Edison really had it. Um, I don't know how much of this resonates with all of you, but if you're on this, I know that being healthy is definitely a value. And it says here, and he said this in 1903, that the doctor of the future will prescribe no medicine, but concern his patient with the care of the human frame in diet and the cause and prevention of disease. You've heard that saying, you are what you eat. It's really you are what your body can do with what you eat. So the quality of food as well as being mindful of your frame and doc, you are, I've actually used chiropractic care a lot in the past and I, I can see the value in it, absolutely. Um, but we can prevent the things that are going on and these are the most recent stats in 2018. I won't read them all, but we're spending $3.5 trillion on healthcare. And number one, um, for example, Japan is number one in the world for health and longevity, but the US is number 58 right now, right next to Cuba. And so, but the, the interesting part of that is that we're number one in the world for health, for um, drug consumption. And so I'm thinking, what is it that, how are we dropping the ball there? What is going on here? And here's statistics. One in two persons will have cancer. 
um, it's the leading cause of death, childhood obesity. And 80% of our conditions are caused by lifestyle. So if that is the case, our health really is in our hands. And I love that. I love that. And so let's go into the five factors of how we really want to take care of our health. And if you look here, this is a slide of the nervous system, which controls everything, right? Our brain is our main computer unit. We've got one hole in our skull. It, their spinal cord leaves the skull. Every single nerve that goes to every single organ leaves the spine first. So our message from the brain to the body exits the spine before it goes anywhere, whether it's our tissue or our organs. So of course, our number one factor for true health is a healthy nervous system because it controls everything. Every single organ, when it dies, it dies from the outside in. And I know that it's, a, it's a, I don't even like saying that word, but it, it's a fact that it's basically the impulse going to the function. It, it slowly withers away over time. Number two, a positive mental attitude. What you think about, you talk about, you bring about. Exercise, number three. We, we're, built for, we're built for motion, use it or lose it, proper rest, that's when we do our healing, and nutrition, of course, even though it's number five, you know, Kimberly, you tapped into it, it's, it's pretty much um, the most important, because it's our fuel source. Hey, doctor, can I interject a real quick of question course, for you Keith. in regards to that? So if you go back to the previous slide there, talking about yeah. the nervous system, um, I, I heard somewhere, and you have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, that's usually the, the cause when we, when we talk about somebody that has cancer, they typically, you know, goes undiagnosed, un, even unnoticed by the patient themselves because there was no quote unquote pain. There was no discomfort. There, there was nothing of that matter. So is that ine inevitably true? Is that when you're saying that it's kind of dying from the inside, that as that tumors growing, right? That cancer is growing, metastasizing potentially. Is, is that because the nervous system is no longer kind of connected to that? And that's why people don't feel it. I mean, you just showed a fact about, you know, even today's age, 2019, how many breast cancer deaths, right? And we even have mammograms and, and things like that that are done, but sometimes they're, they're undiscoverable because again, no patient uh, pain, and no discomfort, and then all of a sudden something's discovered. And you know, I wish it was a cut and dry answer like that, but if we go back to what I was saying when we talk about what cancer is, right? Cancer, abnormal cell growth. We have our nervous system that's responsible for sending signals to stimulate cells, go take out these bad cancer cells, the abnormal cells. And so if we look at this picture, the nervous system, right, leaving the brain, leaves the spine first, and then there's a nerve that goes back to the brain to tell us there's a problem. If there's interference with the nervous system, like you were alluding to, we won't get the message there's a problem. Just like how the cause happened, which you were asking, Keith, that nerve impulse that was responsible for telling those cells what to do. If that nerve impulse was interfered with, then yeah, that's what... We, we aren't functioning the way we should be to combat it. And again, when we talk about all of these factors can play a role in our body breaking down, specifically with cancer, because yeah, if, if we're just basing it on looking good and feeling good, if the nerve that goes back to the brain, which is responsible for telling us there's a problem, if it's not working right, yeah, we're gonna think everything's fine until it's too late. Does that kind of answer that, Keith? Yeah, because it's just, uh, I mean, I think that's what cancer is. It's that hidden nemesis that uh, it, it, it hides, you know, and it, you know, it's growing, it's, it's, it's pervasive. And unfortunately, sometimes we discover it too late. And that's when the issues are there. So now let's start talking about what your next slide is, which is, of course, getting into, you know, obviously devising maybe better health strategies so that way we can combat those hidden pervasive you know, enemies inside of our own body. And, and Kimberly, like you said, you, you are what you eat. And you also said, Kim, go, Kimberly, go ahead. Yes. And, and so the things we put in our bodies are really impactful. I mean, you look at, I don't fully believe, and maybe you can, you know, attest to this in genetics, meaning if you look at a family, they eat mostly the same things, they have the same 
uh, diet, they have the same lifestyle. Well, here's the thing, Kimberly, I don't, I don't want to over talk it there, but it's exactly that, right? When we talk about our genetics or we blame our genetics, that's old training. Um, Bruce Lipton, uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton, who taught the medical um, curriculum at Stanford, who is the godfather of epigenetics, is shown in his lab, and that's why he no longer teaches the curriculum, is because he was shown in his lab that it was contradicting what he was teaching in old textbooks, and it's this. Every day of our life, we can turn our genetic coding on and off with what we right. think, how we eat, and what we do. People who get the same disease as their parents, well, guess what? They ate the same, they lived the same lifestyle, they thought the same thoughts. Right. What's the definition of insanity? Doing the exact same thing, expecting a different outcome. Exactly, exactly. So I really do believe and have hope around the kinds of things that, that we're doing to foundationally change the way the body heals. And um, incidentally, since we are talking about cancer, I don't know if you can see this, this is an excellent read. This is Robert Wright's book called Killing Cancer, Not People. And he goes over the three things in this book, Tongan water being one of them as being part of your diet and a way to alkaline your body, a way to help your body heal itself. And your body really does want to heal itself. So um, it was designed for healing. And so I think there's a combination of things that we can really do and be very proactive in this. And this is Really, my passion, it's been so exciting seeing people's lives absolutely change in this, um, as well as, you know, looking at this list, uh, turmeric is excellent for that as well. There's so many supplements out there, but um, I think it's a, a balance of, of what we're all doing here today. When, when we look at nutrition, um, everyone hopefully has heard of omegas and fish oils um, <clears throat> and very essential. What, what's happening with when we when we walk in the grocery store is everything is processed, right? The real health variable is walking on the outside or perimeter of the grocery store. Grass-fed beef, um, grass-fed organic meats in general, they're going to have a higher omega-3 content. And the omega-3 to 6 ratio is really what's um, imp one of the important variables about keeping our body from being inflamed. Because most of us, and Kimberly, that's what, exactly what you're talking about with the water as well, is it's helping reduce the inflammation. Because we're mm -hmm. walking around inflamed because genetically modified organisms or GMOs. The grains that we have in this country, that's why Monsanto's was kicked out of 16 countries in Europe, is because it's a genetically modified grain. IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, leaky gut, all of those have increased exponentially over the last few decades because of this. There's, uh, and you talked about the pesticides, Kimberly, if you want to tap into that as well, about yes. the oils changing and TBT, which blows up insects' guts. If, if there's a seed that kills insects by blowing their guts up, isn't that going to affect us? Absolutely. I mean, think about it. They put the pesticides on the food to kill, to kill the bugs. And so what is that doing with us? And so when you wash your fruits and vegetables with regular tap water, it doesn't wash them off. And we'd like to, some of us do, some of us don't, but um, the oil, the pesticides that they're using nowadays are oil-based. So what you need is you need something like a strong Kangen 11.5 water that actually emulsifies oils. And I have amazing pictures about the before and after, even using organic foods. But the pesticides are doing a number. They're neurotoxins. They, and as they build up in our bodies, how much of those things are going to um, be our cutoff point where we're, our bodies are starting to succumb to those poisons that we're putting in our body thinking we're doing something helpful helpful we want to address i want to address as well i watched uh youtube on the fish are sick and basically it's we always think fish is the healthy the healthy um solution well in 2016 or 2015 um there was a uh nuclear physicist who did a presentation uh, at a seminar I was at, and the um, nuclear power plant in Japan, when uh, the, um, what was it again? The, uh, not the typhoon, um, but when Japan had the- uh, Nuclear meltdown? 
the nuclear meltdown and it was leaking into the ocean. Basically, the research that they were doing, he said, the ocean's dying. Don't eat anything out of the, that area of the ocean. And as well, when we talk about fish, most of it's farmed. And what that means is they're actually feeding the fish corn, GMO, big bags of corn. And all the fish are, they fatten them up because they make more money. So there's, the fish are getting fatter and they're getting sick because they're all in these little cages or, or mesh. It's, you know, just YouTube it. You won't eat farm fish again. The secret when you're buying fish, look for wild caught. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to chicken and, and, and various other meats, free range are the key words. And of course, we talked about turmeric, curcumin, ginger, garlic. Those are all amazing anti-inflammatories we want to have in our diet regularly. Kimberly, you want to talk, touch on dehydration? Absolutely. You might, you might say that you drink a lot Sorry. of water. I hear people tell people all the time, oh, I drink lots of water. And yet, um, people still have headaches. Headaches are linked directly to dehydration. Um, there's so many things that happen. In fact, 80% of us are walking around dehydrated and we don't even know it. We think, oh, we're drinking water, but um, let's Take a look at your next. urine. Yeah, exactly. Um, can we go to, the, these are just some things that, um, that if you look at even headaches or migraines, um, muscle cramps, increased thirst, dry mouth, um, confusion and weakness, those are all attributed to dehydration. And so what I found is, can we switch to the next slide, please? Of course, Kimberly. Drinking, so there's, so if you've ever drank water, I don't know, you can just answer yourself and you've had like a sloshy, bloated feeling. Think in terms of taking a handful of racquetballs, throwing them at a chain link fence. Very few get in, okay? If you look on the left side here where it says tap and bottled water, it says that there's a greater surface tension and their bulk clusters, limited absorption by the cells. So it's like taking that racquetball, throwing them at a chain link fence, very few get in. So when the water's passed through the machine, it actually restructures the water. It creates, it creates an active hydrogen, which is an antioxidant, which reverses aging and disease but it changes the water from 15 to 20 molecules per cluster down to four to six. Well, your cell can only receive seven. So if that's the case, you're actually getting six times more hydration level with Kong and water. So it's a huge change just in your cellular structure. And it actually, it's like taking a handful of marbles and throwing them at a chain link fence. More get in, more hydrate, so they're flushing toxins, you're being hydrated. I haven't taken an ibuprofen in 10 years. I just don't get headaches. There's so many things that have happened as a result. My own personal story, um, so with, with this water. And, and so hydration is really key and I'm, I'm just super excited. It can be as simple as that and it can be very, um, you know. And I'll notice patients, I'll notice patients that the tissue feels different. Mm -hmm. when we're dehydrating like you said Kimberly most of us are walking around dehydrated I know myself one of the key variables of reminder right well, well who doesn't drink coffee here right that that's going to be a, a dehydrant right there but it's the color of the urine which is, should be a key you should always be checking would you agree with that Kimberly absolutely absolutely it's a it's the a clearer, direct the result of what's going on in your body Absolutely. One other thing you guys um, take a look at, uh, Zach Efron is doing a new series on Netflix uh, called Down to Earth. And his second, um, uh, second episode is him going to France because Europe tends to be a little bit um, better about doing some things uh, for the environment and for the human being. And they actually talk completely about water and about you know how the U.S. is missing the boat when it comes to making sure that we're putting in our body very, very good uh, water opposed to just bottled water. Uh, so it's right. a really cool series. Check it out. It's called Down to Earth with Zac Efron. And it sees it, it's the second episode in there in France. So I just wanted to give you guys a side note on that to learn a little bit more about water should anybody want to know more. That's awesome. Yeah. And just, and when we are, because by far the proper water is the most important um component to the drinking the water but as far as amount goes again i just um 
uh, article that I had read. They reviewed 200 articles on the proper amount of water. And Kimberly, uh, we didn't touch on this, but I'm not sure when you're sharing with your clients, but the research uh, that I had learned was basically, so for me, a 200 pound man, divide that by two and that's the amount of ounces. So I should be drinking 100 ounces mm -hmm. of water a day. Absolutely, you wanna drink a minimum of half your body weight in ounces. And here's the thing, your body's gonna tell you what it needs. Um, I drink about not all the time. Uh, well, it's going to tell you if you if you're not feeling well, if you got a headache, if you're not sleeping well, if you have headaches, uh, if you have just mental un unclarity, you're dehydrated, and um, your body really does want you to. The other thing is is the hormone interrupters and uh, the reduction of testosterone that happens for men when drinking bottled water. The plastics is a whole nother issue. So that's just a little aside, but it's been very different. When we could do a whole talk on that and just even five, the food groups, uh, five foods that we eat as well. Let's, before we run out of time here, let's go and talk about number four, the proper rest. Most of us are probably not getting proper rest. This is when our body heals. This is when growth and repairs and so important for growing kids. We respond to exercise better with proper rest the immune system which keeps us healthy right we talked about cancer the immune system stops cancer it's boosted through proper rest everyone knows if the more we're stressed out the more we uh don't get enough sleep all of a sudden we're getting sick why is that the immune system starting to break down uh, number three, exercise. We're a machine. If we don't use it, we lose it. Wolf's Law from the 17, 300 years ago, a doctor made that statement. We're made for motion. Every single muscle, tendon, and ligament start and stop on bone. We're a biological lever system. We need to use it. We have more muscle than fat on purpose. It's, we're, we're, we need to exercise to use our frame. Uh, you know, do you have a daily stretching regimen? What'll happen, right? When we, when we aren't lengthening our muscles, cause we have active stretches and we have passive stretching. Passive stretches is the ones we want to hold for more than 30 seconds, lengthen the tissue that those should be done daily. Cause what'll happen is we'll go through a routine every day. Muscles will shorten and every muscle in our body, every tissue for that matter has a fascial lining called fascia. And the fascia will shorten. It's like a nylon stocking on a leg. And if it shortens it, it get little streaks and there are adhesions. And that will tighten everything up. And then we'll go and do some explosive movement and, and we'll get an injury because everything wasn't lengthened. I think, doctor, you also touched upon in regards to, you know, other cultures. And I think that we do see that in other cultures, especially about the mobility. And, you know, there's certain cultures that just the daily activity of things like Tai Chi and other types of so movement of the body, again. you know, to actually just to kind of, again, reestablish, resettle, you know, your body back into a norm, right? Because what do we do all day long? Probably abnormal activities from, uh, you know, let me talk on the phone or let me do this or let me do that, right? All these movements that are probably not advantageous to us, even though are, they are movements, right? So I think that's where we probably also have to glean from other cultures, a lot of that self-preservation, you know, through movement and reawakening, you know, those, that movement, not only that, but the nervous system that you were discussing. hundred percent. And, and, um, writing it down. Um, and, you know, I know an amazing person on here and Keith, you as well. Um, I give him his regimen every day, KB. Um, I'm not sure if we have everyone muted, uh, but, <clears throat> I have my morning routine every yes, day. Yes, everybody's I muted except for just us, the panelists. Okay, gotcha. And so we can talk about that at the end. Um, let's let's talk about this too because I I think this one is so applicable to everyone listening today because you know the top ten most stressful jobs in the country is the real estate agent. That stress. Anyone who's stressed out, just watch them. Just listen to them. Anxiety, by definition, is not being present, right? There's other things on the go. What we think about, we talk about, we bring about. If you think and you're stressed, you're talking about being stressed, well, what's going to be the result? You're going to be stressed. 
managing our stress and keeping a balance in your life and your goals, right? Um, I, this is a, uh, having your vision, your mission, your purpose. What is your one, three, five year goals? Always having those written down, just like a daily exercise regimen having those down and doing them and consistently follow through is going to get you those results. And of course, number one, our, our nervous system, right? Why is our nervous system the number one factor for true health? Well, that controls everything in the body. Sorry for clicking my pen. <laughs> um, Chiropractic, what, as a chiropractor, what I do restoring proper spinal movement. The spine houses the nervous system. Look at the do, look at the don't. Who do you think is going to be having less stress of a nerve impulse from the brain to the body? Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's so easy to see it. You know, I know an individual here, he's, he's gone from five foot three to five foot three and a half since being under care with me. Uh, Posture prevents added stress to the spinal cord. Reduce our toxins in our system, which Kimberly, you, you've, you've tapped on it a bit um, and, and we'll go into it even more. Again, I, I'm gonna, I think that every single person here should be on an omega-3 supplementation. Every one of us, why? Because we have too much omega-6 in, um, in our diet. And omega-6 is an essential fatty acid, but it's an inflammatory. We need more omega-3s. And so you know you're buying the right one. Look at the back of the label. The DHA level should be higher than the EPA level. Or sorry, I said that backwards. Higher ratio EPA to DHA is best. Get mixed up here. Sorry about that, guys and ladies. <clears throat> Did you want to add something, Kimberly? I think you're doing great. Okay. And now let's talk about why our body's breaking down. Stressors, right? We got good stress. Mm -hmm. What would be an example of a good stress? Working out, working our tissue, and our bad stresses. This is how we're all breaking down. The thoughts, the toxins, the traumas, or the or the mental, the chemical, and the physical. All right, now let's talk about that. Again, I mentioned it a minute ago. Mm -hmm. The mental stresses. Look at, you tell me this lady's not stressed out right now? Wow, right? Job, anxiety, retirement, debt, closing the deal. Um, all of the things that you realtors are dealing with on a daily basis, those mental stresses, dr just driving in the Bay Area. All of these things, and you watch, even as I'm talking about it, I'm seeing my shoulders come forward, I'm closing off my posture, and I'm bringing more stress into my body. Yeah. Now, when we're stressed out, we're unable to deal effectively with additional stresses. That's just a fact, because we're so focused on that. And if you look at this chart, the sympathetic response system, the fight or flight, if you guys have heard, hopefully most of you have heard about that. This is what's kept us humans alive when we saw the wild animal back in the day and we would run and, you know, a modern day example would be the mom whose child gets stuck under the car and she's able to lift the car up. That mm -hmm. sympathetic, that fight or flight, that's the alarm phase. And then we get to a resistance phase where we plateau and the exhaustion phase, this gray box, that's where most of us are living now. Mm -hmm. And what's happening is we secrete cortisol. Cortisol is an amazing anti-inflammatory, but when we're in the exhaustion phase, it becomes an inflammatory and our body's inflamed. We have adrenal fatigue, we're exhausted, and we're not able to cope. And then of course our chemical. We, food is fuel, right? Don't get me wrong. One in the top left corner seems kind of great in the bottom right. But everything I love, I love chemicals, doctor. I think I'm, I'm in trouble here. <laughs> but look at the top right. I remember the fires in my office. You can see the Los Gatos Hills. When the fires were going on, you couldn't even see the hills and the, the toxins that were in there, right? And again, all of this stuff, the, the moderation, 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 moderation. And we're kind of trained, especially in this country, that moderation isn't really relevant because we're, we're consumers, right? We want to consume, consume, consume. 
And if we're not moderating, we're putting this in our body. And it's the chronically stressful environment that's pathological, not the mm -hmm. body's response to it. Meaning mm -hmm. sickness is around us. It only is logical that the body becomes sick because the environment we put it in was sick. Right, Kimberly? Absolutely, absolutely. As, as a matter of fact, you know, um, our bodies are 75 plus percent water. Our brains are closer to 80. Our lungs are about 89% water. And it's amazing to me how, because we have, we're basically water bags walking around. So the, <laughs> so Dr. Otto Warburg, he made it clear that the root cause of cancer is oxygen deficiency, which creates an acidic state in the human body. So if your body is mostly water, wouldn't it make sense that the water you drink or drinking, I mean, there's really, you know, it's really important to just keep your body hydrated. But as we are dehydrated, he even said that he discovered that cancer cells are anaerobic. They don't need oxygen and they can survive in the presence of high levels of oxygen found. They can't survive found in an al alkaline state. So um, he actually won Nobel Prize in 1931. And, um, you know, people don't talk about this so much anymore because cancer really is big business. Don't you agree? Um, but I just feel like when we change the state or the foundation of what's going on in our bodies, that's going to make a huge difference in our health. And uh, along with all the stressors you talked about earlier, it's just, it's foundational. Well, our body, like you said, Kimberly, our body is meant for homeostasis, meaning balance. When we cut ourselves, do we say heal or does the body know how to heal itself? It does. We need to be giving Absolutely. it the right tools to be doing that. The, the healing that we're trained, the magic pill, the magic surgery. Well, you know, Netflix has got a great movie out there called The Magic Pill. It doesn't exist, right? But we're trained that we live our life. We get busy. We go just like our parents did, and then we break down and we go see our magical doctor for the magic pill or the magic surgery, and that's just not the case. We, we are designed. And, go ahead. And you might think, well, you know, I'm I'm healthy, I'm I'm fine, I don't have cancer, I'm not sick, I I get a lot of out out of my life, but the truth is, everything we do is cumulative. So. What I find is people will sometimes, you know, and as our cells reproduce, if those cells are dehydrated and they're in a compromised state, those compromised cells will reproduce. But if they're alkaline and hydrated, those cells reproduce. So just think in terms of what am I doing on a daily basis that's either creating health or sickness. Amen. So we talked about the toxins, right? The toxins or the, the uh, chemicals, the mental or the thought. This is the big one we always talk about, the really measurable, the physical, whether it's lifting the heavy object, the repetitive motion, the awkward positions with the baby and the laundry, you know, the tech neck or text neck. Look at this person on the far right, 60 degrees, 60 pounds of pressure left. Uh, um, versus zero by posture, right? And of course, the big car accident. Look at this person at the computer. Um, you know, look at that guy's face running into Dr. G's chest. All of those are physical stressors that alter the body. And as a is that how you get new patients there, doctor? You uh, go out on the field the, and create the, new patients. Yeah, I give them my card after I tackle them. That's perfect. <laughs> Take it in their pocket as you're hitting them. Now, now we got to think of some some kind of cue like that for real estate agents, right? Something like <laughs> how to figure out like how to people to sell their homes more efficiently and, and of course buy from them. So we've got to got to narrow that platform down. But at least you, so what, at least you're head on the right track, you know, creating your own business. It's an older picture, but so the vertebral subluxation, and we kind of alluded to it. And the fact is, right, the the nervous system, which is controlling everything, leaves the spine before it goes anywhere else. Whether it's the thoughts, the toxins, or the traumas, bone out of place irritates the nerves. That nerve impulse that has the message gets altered. This causes problems. Body doesn't work right. It, it's really that simple. Mm -hmm. um, there was a uh, study, the, called, the textbook called Subluxation. They took 200 cadavers. Um, 
every single cadaver, so every single dead person had a subluxation at a level related to their death. It's really interesting. How do we know we're subluxated? Do we have those bars like on the phone, bad cell service? Everyone remembers operation. No, right? Matt, if, it, if we had the bars, that would be so easy. Oh, time to go see my doc. I'm, I'm running low. I'm on two bars. Or the fuse box. That would be perfect, Keith. You could just call in your adjustment. Yeah, just tell Anna to uh, flick uh, the 10 position left to right. Oh, so at my office, how we do it is the x-rays because the x-rays will show us what we can't see if you took this magnifying glass away you'd probably see just a nice looking back but that scoliotic curvature there can it make sense to you all how she probably has some pinched nerves at those levels and i thought look at uh, those levels those are going to our heart our lungs our stomach digestive tract maybe not now just like a garden hose the nerve impulse when it leaves the spine, like a garden hose. If you pinch the nerve, pinch the garden hose. At the end of the garden hose, there's a sprinkler. At the end of the nerve, there's an organ. Well, if the garden hose is pinched, that sprinkler that's producing 10 feet of water each way, say that water gets reduced to eight feet each way. So we're losing two feet of water on the edges of the grass. Is the next day you're gonna notice that it didn't get water or is it gonna take a long time? to really notice and then the grass is gonna take a really long time to die. It's gonna take a long time, right? That's just like why our organs are breaking down from the outside in. Or that could also be, like you said, we're not getting the proper um, communication between those antibodies to go against the cancer cells to right, help Right, because the nerves ourselves. are being altered with. They're not working as good as they can because we have nerve interference along with a healthy spine to remove that nerve interference from the brain. The body needs these necessities to heal, right, Kimberly? Absolutely, absolutely. And when we are eating a lot of the things that we are eating, the foods we eat that are acidic, even anything cooked is going to be acidic. The beverages we drink, there's a long list, including you know, bottled waters are, they, they end up, most of them end up testing out very acidic. Um, so when we remove the oxidation from the cells and then you change, help to change the pH of your body by mostly consuming alkaline foods and beverages and you increase your hydration, your body just rises to the occasion. And there's just a number of things that I find happen right off the bat when people start doing these things. and Basically, they're sleeping better. Um, they usually release some weight. Um, they also um, are more regular. You know, it's true the disease starts in a, a, a polluted colon. And when we're not removing the, the, the waste from our colon, that it ultimately uh, builds up a better cognitive skills and more energy. So these are the things, you know, more energy is really important to have in this day and age. Who doesn't sleeping, want more energy? Sleeping better so the body can um, just heal itself, like you said earlier. And, um, and then just being able to think more clearly and being on your game. And, and it just produces an overall balanced sense of well-being. So. And then, of course, how we correct that spinal misalignment oh. from the beginning. I love just sharing this. Full. And, you know, People, when they see this picture, they say, is that a real baby? Yeah, it actually is. And there's a story, a long story that we're not going to get into, but the gist of it, mom was suffering. And when we got her doing and being better, she was having a, a, a hard time with the baby. The baby was beautiful born as baby Edie. She brought baby Edie in from on the way from the hospital just to make sure from the beginning that her spine was aligned. And it's funny, that picture in the bottom left corner, she was only looking to the right. And when I did a very gentle, very, very, very gentle, I, you would barely even feel my hands on you if I gave an example. But when I was able to just tap on that first bone closest to the skull, she lengthened from a contracted position to a lengthened. It was wow. so cool. Um, and now I wanna just leave you guys with this and Kimberly, I'll have you close as well. Remember, the spine houses the central nervous system. That controls everything in the body. 
we're not going to have a healthy nervous system without a healthy spine because that allows for maximum flexibility, painless movement, and full nerve flow. And our nerves control everything. Absolutely. And so that, isn't it true that everything that happens in our bodies happens in water? So when you're adjusting someone and they're hydrated, how does that affect... Hello. Easier. How does that affect... <laughs> Welcome back. How does that affect... Um, your your adjustments and things like that doc well they're whole they're, it's easier adjusting they're holding longer and i mean holding the adjustment longer i'm i'm talking like i knew like you guys knew what i was talking about it, it's just easier well we only have a few more minutes left um, and we're, and we're set Keith, any, yep. if anybody has any questions please post them in the uh, question the q and a um or the chat um, Kimberly, one thing that was uh, kind of brought up um, was that the the irony between you know bottled water, you know, it it was now how long has it been since they actually started to like put bottles in or water in bottles? Because be before before that, it was all sodas, it was all you know treats and drinks, and nobody could think about like oh well, we actually need water, which is our, our number one thing. But my understanding is that the water that's in most of those bottles actually is counterproductive because it actually can rob your body of proper minerals um, and nutrients and not even hydrate you properly. Um, so, so is that almost always true with any bottled water? So I can't buy any bottled water anymore? Or what's the situation with that? You can buy bottled water. Go right ahead. No. <laughs> okay. For you, so, Keith, you know, when they <laughs> drink as much as you want. So when, when, they, when they create the bottles, they, they cool them down with the water. And as the water is cooling the bottle, it, the plastic leaches into the water. I've done a lot of different testing. There's different, different testing. And I'll just say that if, if you're curious about the water you're drinking, contact me and I'd be happy to just test your water for free. I, um, I find that, um, like that saying, you are what you eat, putting most of these, this bottled water does tend to, tend to te uh, test out very acidic. And so, you know, I just think, you know, when you know or you find out that the bottled water industry is unregulated, they don't have any regulations. That right. tells me right away that, you know, there's other things that we should be aware of and maybe cautious sure. over. So, right. so and, and that's, that's the, so yeah, that's the irony of, that's the irony of the, the products mm -hmm. here in the United States. The FDA is not necessarily there to protect us as individuals. Um, whereas in Europe, you know, there are um, governmental agencies that are actually there to protect the consumers. Dr. G, we do have a question for you. How long is the road to correcting a spine that has had some abuse over 50 plus years? <laughs> well, we have an individual here. Um, first of all, everyone's different, right? The way I will treat Keith is not how I treat Kimberly and KB. Exactly. You know, sometimes we can talk about someone in their 50s, they had a broken back in high school, um, and they've been slowly suffering over time. And it can take, you know, if it's taken years to get to a, a broken down position, you know, is it a surprise months to years to, to regain that? It, that's such a hard, I wish I had a more definitive answer. Um, but I will say this, the older we get and the more broken down we get, the harder it is to get back where we were, if at all. And I think that's why I had that slide with that baby because it starts then, right? We take a, we take a growing tree, we step on the tree or the tree gets damaged. The tree doesn't die because it still grows, but how's the tree gonna grow? It's gonna grow crooked or bent. It's the same with our body. We have these traumas and when we're younger, we're moldable, a Gumby spine, so to speak, and we don't really notice. It's decades later when we get the arthritic changes because the body is wearing down from ab arthritis is not normal. When we talk about genetics, for the most part, that's fictitious. Arthritis is a response from abnormal wear and tear that happened earlier in life. Does that make sense? I, I, I didn't really answer the question because I can't. 
Well, I think you did. And then I think if I can surmise for both of you, because I I asked a question to Kimberly about like all bottled water. And I asked a question to you, like how long would it take a prospective person to get back onto a road, you know, after 50 years? And I think both of your answers were exactly the same, which is that it's individual based on, again, what's going on. So Kimberly's offered the fact that if you have a favorite bottle of water or water in general that you like to drink, she'll test it for free. She'll look at it. She'll educate you and discuss with you what you might actually be putting in your body, consuming on a regular basis, whether it's the best for you or not. Dr. G is also you know, available to look at you as an individual because that's what we all are. We're individuals and we all adapt a little bit differently and can tolerate different responses one way or the other. But I think, that Keith, if, um, just, I think if we if we all look at the fact that the road to recovery or the road to a healthier, wealthier lifestyle is is a little bit more of like how each one of us can be directed down that course. So right. I do appreciate both these panelists coming in today. Dr. G, Kimberly, stepping in, spending your Friday morning with us. Thank you very much for sharing Thank you. That. It's a beautiful, sunshiny day and, and up hey, here Keith, in Washington. Just, just before we go, always for my SCORE members as a SCORE affiliate member as well, anyone ever can come into the office at absolutely no cost for a doctor's consult. And we always have a, a SCORE uh, 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 special fee if we do take any x-rays if needed. But always no cost consult for any of our SCORE members. Uh, Also, I'd like to just mention one thing. If you want to look up this water, use Google PubMed for ERW or electrolyzed reduced water, or go onto my website, which is choicehydration.com. If you just go to Google, it's the modern day bathroom wall, and you won't get the exact thing of what this is because it's medical grade water. Well, thank you, Kimberly. And, and if you do have a quick second, I'd recommend that you type that into the message board so then that way it's uh, recorded for, for future review. And Dr. TJ Gudelin, if you want to go ahead and also put in any information in, in the little message board as well, too. And with that, I, I thank you all for attending today. I thank you all very much for spending your Friday morning with us. And albeit, though, that we're all a little bit sheltered in place, keep in mind that as the affiliate committee chair, your affiliates are here for you. So please reach out to any one of us, allow us to help build your business stronger and better than before, and allow us to actually just commune with you as much as possible. So God bless you all, and all of you have a great weekend. And without further ado, take care. Thank you very much all for joining us. Thanks, everybody.